right, so uh, this is the basic hovercraft. Now, when I first made this about five years ago with my kids, they were very upset that it, it only went about an inch off the ground. They were expecting like uh, the, uh, what's the one on Star Wars? No, you're thinking Back to the Future. No, Star Wars. The land, the oh, the land speeder. Yeah, the yeah, land. Yeah, yeah. That's what they were thinking. And when it's on the ground, they were that. very it's upset. Not that at all. The kids are, so I was going to lower expectations right now. It's about that high. Yeah, but you are okay. off the ground. Yeah, off the ground. You are hovering. Yes. You are hovering that much. Okay, so what we have here is just a big round circle. What we have is a screen that's not very high over our heads. Yes. This is a, uh, a four-foot uh, diameter. Diameter, right? Am I doing yes. my geometry right there? That's true. That's absolutely true. A four-foot diameter circle. Now, we've made this out of star foam to make it lighter. We just kind of glued uh, uh, two one-inch pieces together and put some Formica on the top to make it lighter. We actually have another prototype down in the dock right now that's made out of plywood that's going to be a little bit denser, a little bit stiffer, a little bit faster that we'll be expoing or exhibiting tonight. It's really easy. You get a, a four by four sheet of plywood, cut it in a circle, and we're going to show you the real quick in less than like six minutes, we're going to show you how to make your very own hoverboard. Are you excited? Are Countdown. Are Here you excited? Go. Here we go. All right. Okay, first thing to do, we cut it into a circle. So you lay it down on the ground. What you want to do is you want to find the middle of your square. You can do that by either drawing a big X and the, where the two lines intersect, that's your circle. Draw down there, drill a hole in the middle, get a long piece of string, tie a marker onto it, Get a big circle, right? For like, those of you taking notes, you can get a four by four piece of plywood, half inch, at Lowe's or Home Depot for about eleven dollars. Eleven dollars, and you're almost there. Now, if you want to get a four by eight, it's only about fifteen dollars. You can cut that in half, and then you got two, two of them right there, huh? For yeah, four more dollars, and we're at nine. Fantastic. Okay, then you can race. So you're gonna drill a hole right in the very center. There's two holes you got to drill when making the making uh, the the, uh, the hovercraft. You're gonna find one. You're gonna find the very center. You're gonna find a quarter inch carriage bolt. Now the quarter inch carriage bolt, we're gonna stick right up the middle. And now you'll notice that it's not threaded all the way down. It's kind of smooth there in the middle. Remember that. Yes, that's very important stuff. So uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a second hole. Okay, so if this is the very center. Split the difference between that. That'll be about right here. Then split the difference again. And then right about there, so it's about a third of the way up. I'm not sure if I'm doing my math right there. You're going to make about a two-inch uh, hole right there. If you want to use a drill, you can use like a, a, a circular drill bit, you know, to cut it all out. We actually did this with, out of star foam, so we actually used a hot wire to kind of cut it out. Now, what you want to do there, this is where your air intake is going to be. So we've got a, uh, a Black & Decker um, leaf blower. Leaf blower. Now, w with this li particular leaf blower, it's got a, uh, the, uh, where the mulcher. Where the, uh, yeah, where the mulcher the attachment. attachment sticks on. So it's got attachments that will stick onto like it. That. Huh? Come back later. You know what that's for, right? Uh -huh. huh? Are you with me? Yeah, come on. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so fun. So where that attachment comes on, we had a secondary uh, attachment for the, uh, for the bagger. Why is there no DJ music playing? I thought we were going to have DJ music playing. Hey. We're having a, we're doing a demo here. All right, okay. So, uh, so what we took, we took the, uh, the attachment out, and we just stuck it right in there, and we made this guy over here. So now we're going to do just like they do in the movies, where like, they put the fake one into the oven, and then we're reaching over into the other oven and pulling out the one that's already been cooked for a while, because you guys don't want to sit here and watch us do everything. Da -da -da -da, look at that. I just went yeah. back and taped it all up behind those it giant heads a little while, over but there. You got it done. So we took the coupler and just shoved it right into that hole. So what that does is it, it literally turns your hovercraft into an attachment for your... Uh, for leaf your uh, leaf blower. So the leaf blower will just stick right in there, and it just sticks right in there, nice and solid. So you, now you got your cool little leaf blower. Okay, now I think we should, before we go any further, explain the science behind a leaf blower. This is actually really straightforward and simple. What you're doing is, you're going to take your round piece of material, and you're going to cover it with some plastic. We use what, six mil? Six mil. Six mil plastic sheeting from Home Depot. This is stuff you can just cover your yard with. Um, you can get stuff for like two or three bucks. It's pretty cheap. Lay it out, cut a circle, and you're just going to roll it over and just duct tape it down. Nice duct tape solid. is your friend. You oh, want to make the thing airtight, put lots of duct tape on there. You want to get nice and tight right around the edges. And what you're going to do is it creates a little bag here, right? So what you're going to do is you're also going to take a plastic lid. It can be from a butter. It can be from uh, a coffee container. Can. Coffee it can be can. from a coffee can. This it can is be a from a, Jeff, what? What else could it be from? Jeff, what? come on, work with us here. Uh, Greg. Greg. Yeah. Oh. This is just from Lowe's, 69 cents in the, in the paint aisle. So we're going to take oh. this. And before you put that on there, the one thing you also know is you are also going to cut little bitty circle holes around this hole. Okay? What's going to happen is that this bolt is going to go on the top there like that. Nice and simple, straight on there. A little wing nut on the back to make this easy. You got it? Yep, got it. So what the, what the uh, lid does, it works as a flange pretty much to hold the plastic down. So what's going to happen is the air is going to come in through our hole there. You got that? That's good. Yeah. So the air is going to come in through here, inflate this bag and make a donut. This is going to hold it set down in the middle. Then all the air is going to escape out of here and inflate this. Air is going to escape 
out around the edge. You get this donut of air, air escaping around the edge. Does that make sense? Everyone with us? Are you with us? Sunglass guy? Yeah, you're with us? All right, cool. If you got your sunglasses on, we're, we're ready to go. So now we got to test this thing. Now here's the, here's the thing. This floor is going to absorb a lot of the air. So we're not sure how much lift we're going to get. Concrete well, floor is fantastic. Gym floors are out of this world. When we're doing this stage in there, when we do it uh, on the stage, these stages and some of your stages might be like this. They're actually pieces put together. The air actually escapes down through that, and you'll go, and then you'll just crash down, and it's not good. And So we're going to put some plastic sheeting down on the stage in there uh, for tonight's demo. But uh, for now, we're just going to test this out and see how it works. You guys ready to see a hovercraft work? All right, hovercraft! All right, here we go. So, so uh, we're going to take this, and we're going to attach this right like that. Hovercraft music, we got it. There we go. Okay, now, now you'll note, whenever you're riding a hovercraft, and you want to do this, when you want to sit in the very middle of this, because if you're sitting towards the back, think of it as you're sitting on a donut, just like if you were floating it out in the ocean, right, on a piece of wood. If you're set towards the back, it's going to tilt forward back like that, and all the air is going to escape out the front. You won't float. You want to sit on the middle so that air is going out immediately right underneath you. Get, 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 get up. And, and actually, we haven't even tested this, and we're not sure if this one's going to work. <laughs> you think it's going to work? I, do you think it'll work? I have no clue. No. All right, here we go. All right, so... Uh, If you use the same piece of plastic over and over and over, there will be a hole, blowout. and you'll get a blowout like that. Blowout. And when it blows out, it doesn't work nearly okay, as well. Okay, so let's troubleshoot this. What are some other materials you can use besides six mil plastic sheeting? Oh, you could use a you could duct use tape. pure duct tape. You could use don't use don't use pure duct tape. Don't no don't no, yeah, don't use that. Um, you, uh, you could also use, if you go to uh, Walmart back in the material section, there's like that rubber stuff they use to cover furniture. It's really thick and kind of stretchy. That works really well. Um, another thing you can use is the plastic shower curtains. You can get them for like $1.50 at Walmart. It's nice and slick. It's fast. Those work really well, and they stretch a little bit too. I've actually heard some people say and use those blue tarps as well. They're a, yep. little, they're a little bit heavier duty, and they'll, but they'll go. So this will lift. If you get, um, just so you know, your uh, leaf blower mechanics, this one, uh, this is an electric one. They have battery powered ones. The battery powered ones only go up about 150, 160 miles per hour throughput. The gas powered ones, huh? Backpack yeah. gas powered. Yeah, I see the eyes lighting yes. up back there. Yes. Those are actually twice the throughput. So if you do that, make sure you reinforce your plastic sheeting big time. Because right you will blow that thing out in yes. no time. The other thing you'll notice on this is it, the, the holes are what where it blew out, if you've got a grommet machine or a grommet tool, you can actually grommet your holes around so you'll have less likelihood of a blowout. The rest of the shirt. Yeah. And Good so, stuff. one other thing you can think about is what are some applications for a hoverboard, you might be asking. What could I do if I had if a hoverboard? If I was playing a game with a hovercraft, what would I do? I don't know. Well, there's a couple different things. You can play games like a uh, human shuffleboard. You can play things like... Okay, so uh, for human shuffleboard, take tape, make triangles on the things, put two of them, and because they just slide your kids back and forth for points. So, you know, you, you put your, hey, we got five points with Jimmy. All right, woohoo! Another thing you can do is you can do uh, hoverboard bowling. Hoverboard bowling is a nice one. Uh, these are, uh, these are we, we made these out of star foam so they won't hurt as much. The actual ones can crash. Just to know, one of the reasons this is ripped is we did have a crash with one of these uh, yeah, uh, in, San, in San Diego. So, good times though. But uh, human bowling, yeah, good times. Good times. Just go right down the gym. Another thing is just, Hoverboard races can be fantastic. You get some cones instead of a track. And trying to, even if you have kids pushing other kids around a track, it can be extremely challenging, but a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, trying to think of some other ones. Just races, uh, any type of thing where you're pushing kids and they're just going across. And what you'll find out, if it is a uh, battery-powered one, you don't go super fast. You go about as fast as a push, but there's hardly any friction, so you almost don't sl slow down at all. So if you're on one side of the gym and you shove a kid, <laughs> or push him gently, you know, encourage him along, <laughs> He'll start traveling across at the exact same rate all the way across the gym floor. And as he crosses the free throw line and starts getting closer and closer to the wall, his perception of his speed goes up dramatically as he's approaching the wall. Because there's no brakes on this. The only brake is turning off the power. So that's one thing is if you are on an extension cord, it's nice because you have a tether you can actually control a little bit better. Uh, but the safety valve is just kill the power when you're done. Speaking of killing the power when we're done, I think we're I done. Think I'm transition out of here.